Good afternoon, everybody. It's Pastor Mike uh, here for Midday Prayer, I think. Um, I think I'm up for Midday Prayer. I'm going to check online and see if we are connected. So uh, let me do that. And uh, I appreciate your patience with us as we uh, are navigating some technical difficulties today. It does look like we are up and running. I'm not sure that... Yep, it is. We are up and running. So I'm going to do midday prayer a little bit differently today than I normally do, only because I won't be able to play the music. I will give you the link for the music where you can hear the song, but we will get together for some conversation, some scripture, some centering, and some prayer time. Um, so if you are here with me, let me know that you are here, um, and I will include folks in our uh uh, in our prayers as best we can um, and um, we'll go from there so thank you for your patience and so to center ourselves um, in our time together for prayer time uh, let us breathe in the breath of God and breathe out our cares and our concerns and breathe in the love of God and breathe out our doubts and our despairs and breathe in the life of God and breathe out our fears and our frustrations. So this morning I met with um, the men from the church that meet for our monthly men's fellowship uh, and Bible study, also known as Guilt Free Breakfast. And um, we had uh, an opportunity to read through some of the lessons for this upcoming Sunday. And the first lesson we read through comes from Genesis. Uh, the 50th chapter, it's um, the story of Joseph and his brothers. And I told the guys that um, uh, the theme for uh, this coming Sunday is all about forgiveness. So I thought I would um, do a little reflection on uh, how Joseph, the story when, I, when Joseph um, forgives his brothers and then we'll pray together for forgiveness and grant forgiveness to one another as well. So uh, it's Genesis 50. It's starting with the 15th verse through the 21st verse. So here are these words from Scripture. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, Joseph, I beg you, Forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of your servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to, pres pres per to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Now, I asked the guys this morning, you know, what, all, what all do we remember about Joseph? And usually the first thing people remember is his um, coat of many colors, his coat with long sleeves, I think is what it, literally what it says. Um, and that uh, Joseph was um, his father's uh, favorite, uh, and Joseph knew that as well and kind of played into that, I think. Um, uh, his brothers were um, not overly thrilled with the preferential treatment they saw that Joseph got. So they, um, they actually uh, were going to try to kill him, and instead they sold him into slavery. So he ends up in Egypt um, and uh, has some, it's not an easy road in Egypt, and then he has some, um, some time there where um, he kind of becomes Pharaoh's favorite uh, or favored one uh, as he is able to interpret some dreams and they build up, you know, he, he understands there's going to be a big famine. They build up all the stock of uh, food for folks. And so then during the famine, they're able to feed people. And Joseph's brothers uh, and families are all now heading to Egypt because they too are in the middle of the famine and they... Um, um, 
and, and they're looking for food. Um, Joseph's father, Jacob, dies. Uh, they bury him, and then his brothers come before him and, and present themselves, um, really looking for, hope, hoping for some forgiveness, maybe possibly either, even reconciliation. Um, and then Joseph, um, Joseph does, it seems, uh, he does forgive them. Um, I love the words um, of Joseph, though where he says, do not be afraid. And as I told the guys this morning, anytime you read the phrase, do not be afraid, um, understand that God's going to show up or something, a manifestation of God is going to show up. Um, and Joseph then says, am I in the place of God? Uh, so he, he basically, I think what Joseph is saying is that, you know, he's not the one to judge. He's not going to be the one that judges. He is, in fact, going to... Um, um, uh, take care of and forgive his brothers and take care of them and provide for their needs. Uh, and then this notion that God, you know, even though his brothers uh, intended, their intentions of his brothers were evil, um, God's intentions in here were to bring good out of that. And, and so anytime I hear uh, how God is, in, and we say in church that God is good, I, I use that phraseology to remind us uh, all the way back to the beginning of Genesis where God's intention is always good. You know, out of the chaos of the world, God creates order and proclaims it good or very good, right? Uh, so God's proclamation and God's intent is always for good. Now, we don't always follow along and do what maybe God's instructions would tell us to do, to live into that good. Um, and so God, as well, is... Uh, is often at the at a place of where we throw ourselves at God's feet and beg for forgiveness as well, and God's goodness then forgives us repeatedly over and over. And so, I want us to to consider that you know number one, God did not um, cause Joseph's brothers to be evil um, and do the evil intention, but God worked through um, kind of the human nature of God of Joseph's brothers. Uh, and brought good out of that. Not only for, remember, not only for God's people, the is ancient Israelites, but for all of God's people, um, including all of the Egyptians, uh, who eventually would have to understand in the book of Exodus who God really was. So, um, so as we think about how we practice forgiveness ourselves, um, uh, I think we can lean into and live into the goodness of God as our place for forgiveness. And I'm going to put in the comments uh, a link to um, a song. I just put it in there now. A link to a song that um, our, um, there it goes, that our friends in Camp Hill uh, have posted. Uh, it's called The Goodness of God. It's a great song about how we live in that goodness. And I encourage us all to, to watch that later um, as well so that we can uh, hear them sing. Uh, and in absence of a song in real time today, we're going to gather our thoughts and we're going to pray. So let us pray. Good and gracious God, you are a God of goodness. You are a God who seeks goodness, who gives goodness, who surrounds us with goodness, despite our inability to always ourselves be good. And for that, God, we thank you. And most, most especially, we thank you for the forgiveness that you so graciously extend uh, even when we aren't good, uh, even when we um, sin, even when we turn away from you, even when we don't love our neighbors as ourselves. So help, uh, help us to return to you, to turn around, to repent, and to follow your ways of goodness in all of our daily interactions. And we also pray, God, that your goodness uh, would show up in the form of healing for those who are in our, who are in our midst and who are um, looking for that healing. So we pray for Roxy Bartle, Betty Karabanoff, Richard, Adrian Palazzi, Natalie, Laura Dareth, Terry, Howard Fales, Rebecca Neal, Glenn Hardesty, Jane Cox, Sabrina, Ryan and Dave, Lynn Smith, Linda Heitzelman, Peggy Helwig, Ruby Gostel, Megan Yunkin, Katie Lawrence, Tracy Strimple, Paul and Dawn, Kelly, Brian Shaw, Jerry, Carla Sumanis, Lynn Anderson, Mike, Keith Wagner, Bev Diaz, 
Connie Koss, David, Ernie, Keith Brown, Adam Hayes, Karen, and those that we name aloud or silently in our hearts at this time. Travel mercies for Mike as he travels. Eric. We also give you thanks, God, because uh, Jesus' resurrection shows us that your goodness and mercy, which pursue us all the days of our lives, um, do so even through death and don't come to an end in death. And so we ask God that that hope that you, you give us through the resurrection, that we will, will live within your grace and your mercy and your love forever and ever, might soothe the souls of those who are grieving, especially the family and friends of Marcia Betts on her death and the family and friends of Rick Hirsch on his death. Now, God, as your people, we come together and we uh, pray uh, the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, as God's people call together, we um, breathe in the breath of God. And we breathe out our tension and our turmoil. And we breathe in the love of God. And we breathe out our haste and our apprehensions. And we breathe in the life of God. And we breathe out our work and our worry. So a couple of announcements for us as we wrap up our time together. Don't forget uh, Lutheran World Relief. Um, if you want to make a donation to help those in Morocco and in Libya and in other parts of the world that are um, living through the aftermath of... Um, of earthquakes and flooding, um, the likes of which many of us have never seen before in our lives. Um, you can always make a donation to Lutheran World Relief at lwr.org, um, and uh, they would appreciate your financial support of, of their ministry efforts. Uh, we'll be together for worship on Sunday at 930. Um, we also are starting up our faith formation time, so play it in God's story and... Um, Affirmation of Baptism will start up. Our Living in God story actually starts the uh, week after next, or we, in, in, in two weeks. Uh, you're invited to come to our um, community conversation at the uh, 11 o'clock hour, uh, where our uh, Reconciling in Christ team will hold their final um, community conversation regarding the survey data that was collected as part of that process. And um, we also um, thank you that was my timer going off. Sorry about that. Uh, I thank you for being with us. Uh, we'll be back with you for Midday Prayer on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of next week. Hopefully um, the, the gremlins inside of the techno world will go away and things will work a lot more smoothly than they did this, this afternoon. I appreciate your understanding, your grace, and your patience with us. Uh, so until then, uh, hear these words of blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So have a great rest of your day, and I will see you at, on worship, on, at worship on Sunday and next week for Midday Prayer Song. God bless. Bye now.